One more quick note about endocrine glands kind of in general, I think will be helpful for this week and the future, is to know the stimuli that can cause their, um, can, can stimulate them, cause their function. So there's three different ways that endocrine glands can be initiated to respond. Um, one is a humoral stimulus. Don't really care if you know this name humoral, but it's going to be a regulated variable directly that stimulates their response. So altered levels of ions and nutrients can directly be detected by endocrine organs. Calcium is one example. Blood sugar is the other ones. Those, those two we'll see this week. So the parathyroid gland can detect low calcium directly. It has sensors in it. Um, the other two, so this is the one we'll see the most this, this week as our two examples of endocrine organs. I do want to point these other two out. So endocrine organs can be stimulated by the nervous system. This happens with the adrenal medulla, where there is a neuron that tells the endocrine system to respond. This you can see is going to be more complicated than a simple like stimulus response pathway because there's two integrators here, really, right? That's why we're not going to talk about it as much. Same with this. A hormone can cause a hormone to respond. So this is really common with the hypothalamic pituitary organ systems pathways. We will do this in the spring a lot. I love the hypothalamus pituitary organ systems, um, the HPA, HPT, and HPG pathways that are multiple hormones in a complicated, really cool system. So hormone could be stimulated by another hormone. So I want you to be aware of those three ways to initiate hormone release. Um, and again, this week we'll see pancreas and parathyroid, which both are, both are responding as sensors because they can detect that regulated variable directly.